Good morning, friends. I welcome you this morning in the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we gather together, our worship is going to be somewhat different this morning from the services that we are used to being part of on a Sunday. We're gathering together, but we are not in the sanctuary. You are in your homes. I'm in mine. Nonetheless, as we gather, God is with us. It might be that our pets or our children or other distractions become part of this service today, and that's okay. I'm sure that God knows what's happening in our homes, and I trust that God is comfortable in your home and in mine. It might feel strange to sing in your home where you will be able to hear your own voice, to sing without the sound of the shower to drown the noise. Whether you sing along or choose to say or read the words of the songs of praise is up to you. But although you are probably sharing in worship by looking at some kind of screen today, I would like to encourage you to remember that not one of us in worship is a spectator. We are worshiping together. God is with us as we gather in his name. So let us hear and respond to God calling us to worship in the words of the prophet Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 9. Stand up and bless the Lord your God. From everlasting to everlasting, Bless God's glorious name, which is high above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You alone made heaven, even the heaven of heavens with all their forces. You made the earth and all that is on it, and the seas and all that is in them. You preserve them all, and the heavenly forces worship you. Let's worship God together in song.
as we continue in worship, let us open our hearts to God in prayer as we pray together. Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come, we thank you that you are ever present with us. And as we draw near to you this morning, we ask, Lord, that you also would draw near to us, that you would reveal yourself to us and that we would know without a shadow of a doubt that you are here. You have not forgotten us. You have not forsaken us because you are faithful. Your loving kindness never comes to an end. And so, Lord, we come to you this morning from a climate of fear, from our frantic busyness that seems to have achieved nothing to protect us in this situation. Lord, we come to you this morning in our pride and our selfishness are wanting to be the ones who are not touched by this virus. Lord, we come to you this morning in our deep, deep need. You are the one who gives us peace. Peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, we need that peace so desperately and so we open our hearts to you. And we praise you as you fill us with your peace. As you allow us to breathe easy again. Lord, you are the one who gives us hope. And as we are in your presence right now, we put our hope in you. Lord, we put our trust in you. And we thank you that you are not changeable. Lord, that the hope that we have in you is not vain hope, but it is a hope, a living hope, something that is so important at this time. Lord, we thank you for your deep, deep love. Lord, no matter how far we have strayed from you, no matter how difficult our circumstances, no matter how much we are filled with pain and uncertainty, you, Lord, understand. You wrap your loving arms around us and as we feel your love, we also feel the praise that wells up within us. We praise you for your goodness, for your kindness. We praise you, Lord, for revealing yourself to us, for sending Jesus to show us how much you truly care. Thank you, Jesus, that because you lived amongst us as one of us, you understand the kind of trial that we are going through at this time. And Lord, we come this morning and we do bow before you in confession. We confess that we have not cared sufficiently for others. We have not done what we have, what we should have to help those people who are truly struggling at this time. Those people who are desperate. Those people who just need a phone call. Something to let them know that you care. We confess that we have an obsession with bad news. That each day we check to see what the numbers are like. And very often, 
we forget to check in with you. We forget to ask you what it is that you are doing, what really counts in your sight. Lord, we also confess that we are guilty of feeding our fears, of spreading panic, instead of, Lord, coming to you and receiving your grace. And so, Lord, at this time, we ask that we would just be enabled to stop. To stop all our uncertainty, our fear, our selfishness, the frantic activity that we think may save us. Lord, help us to surrender ourselves to you. And as we do this, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us. That you would take away our sin. That you would fill us with your peace. That you would remake us in your image. And Lord, that we would be able to once again be the bearers of good news. The good news of Jesus the good news of the coming of the kingdom of God. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'm sure that some of you by now are starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable sitting still. And during the past week, I posted a note on Facebook saying that perhaps you would like to start practicing for Sunday service. Some of you may have, some of you may not even have seen the note. But I hope that you'll all get up and move around and worship God as we share in this next song together. prepare ourselves to listen for the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, open our eyes that we might see you. 
Open our ears that we might hear you. Soften our hearts that we might love you. And give us willingness to follow you wherever you would lead. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's listen for the word of the Lord as it comes to us this morning from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live and will settle in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Ezekiel is taken by God to a valley full of dry bones and we who have gathered this morning to worship are walking in the valley of the shadow of death. It's not easy to hear about the number of people falling ill and the number of people dying daily. I personally find it incredibly difficult to hear about people who are stubbornly carrying on without any regard for the life of others or any respect for the gift of their own lives. But beyond the daily figures, the pictures of coffins waiting for burial, there are other dark valleys that we are contemplating or walking in already. You know the ones. Whilst we want to be courageous, the truth is that many of us are afraid. We're afraid because we simply cannot see how there will be life after COVID-19. As we stand in the valley of dry bones, God asks us the same question that God asked Ezekiel many centuries ago. Can these bones live? You know and I know that the answer to God's question should be no. There's simply no way that we can come up with 
to make the bare bones that we are looking at live. It's unthinkable. The damage is done. Not even the vultures are still hanging around. But perhaps Ezekiel, like us, didn't want to admit this. Perhaps he was embarrassed to say to God that he had no hope. He was too frightened to admit that his faith was weak or failing. I'm not sure what, but something causes Ezekiel in that situation to throw the absurd question back at God, to refuse to answer directly. And when Ezekiel does speak, all he can say is, Lord, you alone know. Many years ago, someone challenged me to find a simple expression, a few words that could become my personal motto in life. And so over much of my life, my motto has been, God knows. God alone knows. Sometimes I've said it as an expression of hope, an expression of faith. And I've used these words as words of confidence in times of trouble. At other times, God knows has been more of an expression of frustration and depression a bitter lament at my lack of faith and my disappointment with God, who simply refuses to do things the way that I think they ought to be done. The expression, God knows, or Lord, you alone know, is an appropriate expression for us to use today, as we are faced with unthinkable realities, and as we try and envision the future. Lord, you alone know, are words that open us up to the possibilities that God wants to show us today. As God's spirit moves, as the wind blows, and as God's words are spoken through Ezekiel, there is a rattling noise. It's the sound of dry bones moving in the wind. A lot of dry bones. I imagine that when Ezekiel hears that sound, Ezekiel expects to see the bones being blown further apart. But instead, the dry bones are coming together. Ezekiel is familiar with the account of creation that opens with these words. Beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. In this account, God's spirit hovers over the chaos, the emptiness of the deep. God speaks into this nothingness, and bit by bit, the world comes into being. In the valley where Ezekiel stands, in the valley where we are standing today, the spirit of God blows over dry bones. These bones are all that is left of the once great army of Israel that was defeated by Babylon. These scattered bones are symbolic of the people of God scattered to the furthest parts of the world. They're the only remaining evidence of a once close-knit community whose life centered around God. as those who seemed not only unwilling, but unable to hear, begin to listen to the prophetic words of Ezekiel, the scattered bones start to come together. They are reassembled and tendons and muscles appear on them. As God's word is proclaimed, the dry bones become full of flesh and are covered with skin but there is no life in them, no breath. They're still dead. And I get the feeling that this is the point at which we find ourselves right now. We're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are, if not in reality, then in our minds, 
already in the valley filled with dry bones. We may not have known just how dead we were, how far from embracing and caring for life we had gone before this virus hit us. The news of this illness sounds in our ears like the wake-up call of the rooster, the ring of an alarm clock, or the beeping of our phones, signaling that we can no longer remain asleep. We can no longer keep on pretending that we don't hear it. We can no longer be blind and act oblivious of how what I do really does have a profound effect on you and on other people after you, and even on the world. Through this pandemic, we've been forced to stop, to go into lockdown, to have ourselves for company. We've been made to leave the rat race of daily existence. We've been given time to consider what it is that is really important in life. We've been given a special opportunity to experience the benefit of downtime and a chance to see how little we truly need to get by. Through this pandemic, we've also been forced to notice things around us that we had come to take for granted or that had disappeared into the noise around us. Things that we didn't have time to see and things that we maybe didn't want to hear. As our senses begin to recover from the overstimulation of life without COVID-19, we are learning to appreciate the sounds of nature. We are hearing the voices of our neighbors around us. We are starting to become tuned in to the happy sounds like the sound of children laughing or of music playing we're also able to hear the sad sounds, sounds of people crying or calling out for help, and sirens that sound warnings to us that the danger is not yet over. We are able to hear the shouting of children, sometimes playing, sometimes arguing. We can sympathize with stressed out parents who are battling to deal with their own anxiety and their children's confusion. We are starting to talk to our families and to make contact with our neighbors over the walls that we have built that have kept us apart. In some places, people are seeing blue skies for the first time in years. And as some people battle for breath in their hospital wards, and on ventilators, others are experiencing for the first time what it is like to breathe fresh air. As people who are frightened to touch one another, people who have been forbidden certain kinds of contact with other people, we are entering into the world of people who are afraid of touch because of past hurts. We are discovering compassion for people who know what it is like, for people who seldom get a hug or get to hold a special hand. But is it enough? Is it enough to make these dry bones live? Friends, the Lord alone knows. I think we still have quite some time to go before we will leave this valley. And I think we still have a long way to walk before we will be ready to listen to the word of the Lord spoken through God's prophets at this time. I think for now the wind of God's spirit is rattling us. It's shaking us. And in some ways we are coming together across the many divides that seemed like they would always separate us. We are developing compassion. We're looking out for each other, even if it's only because we are concerned for ourselves. Right now, as we enter the third day of lockdown in the Valley of Dry Bones, we are certainly having to admit 
how powerless we really are, how little we have listened to God, how much we need each other, and how much we really do not know. It's so easy to forget how vulnerable we are when things are running smoothly. It's tempting to believe and to try and convince others that we are invincible. But it is likely that this sense of inv being invincible is what led to the slaughter of the great army who died in that valley of dry bones. This morning, we may well want to cry out to God together with the people in exile. Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Yes, we are cut off. But is it possible? Could it perhaps be that God has cut us off from many of the things that have been draining the life from us? Could it be then that you and I are the stems that have been prepared to be grafted back into the only vine that can truly give us life? Could it be that what looks like death is in fact rebirth? Lord, you alone know. We wait in the valley of dry bones. We live in the valley of the shadow of death. And we wait for you. We wait to be moved by your spirit. And we wait as we listen for you to say to us, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. We affirm our faith this morning by saying together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we move to the next song, we're going to be using it as our prayer of intercession this morning. This is 
duty and our joy in all times and in all places to give thanks to God. The old people used to talk about counting your blessings and this morning I invite you to take a few moments, perhaps if you are with other people, to just mention to one another the things that you are particularly grateful for and if you are alone then also pause and remember what God has done for you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on you and remain with you and all those you love, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>